Tylko opowieść w przestrzeni pola bitwy pozwoli zrozumieć historię obrony Westerplatte. Dlatego chcemy stworzyć muzeum plenerowe, które da nam wszystkim taką szansę. Od kilku lat prowadzimy pierwsze systematyczne badania archeologiczne w historii Westerplatte. Obecnie przygotowujemy wystawę prezentującą efekty tych prac, a przede wszystkim miejsce godnego pochówku Westerplatczyków odnalezionych w 2019 roku. Westerplatte poprzez swoje położenie i krajobraz to miejsce nacechowane turystycznie, ale to przede wszystkim pole bitwy i muzeum, które na nim powstaje. W zakres planowanej inwestycji na Westerplatte wchodzi m.in. otworzenie części historycznych obiektów zgodnie z ich planami sprzed roku 1939, jak również wykonanie remontów konserwatorskich, uczytelnie reliktów oraz budowa nowego obiektu, który stanie się przestrzenią muzealną. An isolated sandy spit of Westerplatte Peninsula is a perfect site for a new concept museum to tell the story of a lone defensive war of 1939. Entering the area of the historic military transit depot through the Red Wall, you walk past the former station master's railway house, soon to become a visitor center. The route will then lead you along the tracks of a former railway line. This is how you will come to the exhibition in warehouse number one, dedicated to the history of the peninsula and the depot until August 1939. The reconstructed Val field fortification is an element of the peninsula's field fortification system. Then, you will come across a group of warehouses and the fort field fortification. Here, you will learn the history of a seven-day heroic defense of the depot. Further on, the route leads you to the relics of the officer's villa and guardhouse number five. They stand near the heart of the peninsula, the Vesterplatte Defenders Cemetery. On the opposite side, you will find the relics of the old barracks, the NCO's mess, the administration offices, as well as the barracks and guardhouse number three. You will learn about the changes that Vesterplatte went through since 1945. Next, you will come to a building that houses a museum exhibition, where you will get to know the history of the Polish campaign of 1939 and learn what happened to the depot's defenders after surrender. The last building is the power plant, that will house an archaeological exhibition. The first stage will involve restoration of the buildings of the former power plant and reconstruction of the cemetery. The winner of the architectural competition will develop plans for the reconstruction of the cemetery, which will involve displaying the relics of Guardhouse No. 5 and the officer's villa. The second stage will include the Fort Field fortification, selected munitions warehouses, the Station Master's Railway House, and the Red Wall. The third stage covers the southwestern part of the peninsula, where the largest building housing the museum exhibition will be built. Autentyzm pola bitwy, symbol początku II wojny światowej, wyraz gotowości polskiego żołnierza do obrony własnej ojczyzny. Dzień dobry Państwu. W imieniu gospodarza tego miejsca, doktora Karola Nawryckiego, witam Państwa bardzo serdecznie w Muzeum II Wojny Światowej. Nazywam się Bernadetta Wiedźwiadowska i będę miała wielką przyjemność przeprowadzić dla Państwa tą dzisiejszą konferencję. To moderate the conference today for you, just shortly be, um, before you were able to see a short video outlining the main project for how the um, Museum of Westerplatte and the War of 1939 will be built. So until 2020, we hope to rebuild the powerhouse and the cemetery. Stage two includes the, the fort outpost, the munition warehouse, station master's building, and that's until 2024. Stage three to rebuild the NCO casino, 
the barracks, the guardhouse, and there's going to be a major museum building, and that's due to finish until 2026. But before we get to the details of the project, first I'd like to welcome the people here. We have Jaroslav Selin, who's Secretary of State, Ministry of Culture and National Heritage. I'd like to welcome Dariusz Drelich, the governor of the Pomorskie region. And a very warm welcome to Małgorzata Żachowska, who is the granddaughter of one of Esther Plotter's defenders. A very warm welcome to Czesław Nowak, who is the chairman of the Association of Dignity. And I'm delighted to welcome representatives of veterans, organizations, and uh, cutting family members. A warm welcome to directors of museums and presidents of Pomorskie universities and members of the board of World War II anti-communist activists and representatives of the uniformed services. I'd like to welcome the media. This is no coincidence that we're here, a very warm welcome to all the friends um, of World War II Museum in Gdansk. I appreciate such a big turnout. Ladies and gentlemen, Westerplatte is a symbol of Polish resistance, heroic fight of 182 heroic soldiers. Rather than hold their ground for 12 hours, they held their ground for um, seven days. So this is unites us um, at 4.45 on the 1st of September. That's where um, World War II began. This is a world-known um, uh, symbol. And so we know we have the, uh, the presence from the US, Canada, New Zealand, and London. A very warm welcome. Gettysburg Foundation, the US. A very warm welcome to you, USS Arizona Memorial, the US. Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa Tangarewa, National Museum, London, and Canadian War Museum. A very warm welcome to you online. And now I'd like to welcome scientists and experts who uh, have knowledge and experience that had that which they have contributed to the project Westerplatte and the War of 1939 Museum. Jacek Friedrich from the University of Gdansk. Professor Jacek Friedrich, art historian, lecturer, teacher, and director of the Maritime Museum in Gdansk. He wrote more than 100 scientific publications, Silver Cross of Merit, for saving the um, historic um, church in Gdansk when it was on fire several years ago. Dr. Grzegorz Berend, Gdańsk University. His, he is the deputy director of the World War II Museum. Professor Grzegorz Berend is a historian and he studies um, the history of Polish Jews and other groups here in Pomorskie. He's the chairman of the Sztuczow Concentration Camp Museum and also a member of the board in Auschwitz and also the Solidarity um, Center. He has the uh, Gold Cross of Merit and Polish Revival Cross. Adam Koperkiewicz is going to join us here, who's the um, Deputy Director of the Museum. Mr. Koperkiewicz, um, was the director of the Gdańsk Museum of History. History. He wrote more than 40 publications about uh, the science of um, museum, and he, for many years, he was the director of the Gdańsk Museum of History. And now, I'm going to invite Wojciech Turek from the University of Gdańsk, professor who is also member of the museum here. Professor Turek is a historian, a member of the anti-communist opposition during um, the socialist times. 
He was also an editor, uh, the editor in chief of a Christian uh, publication. He studies um, history and has written a number of publications. And now it's over to Yaroslav Selin, who's Secretary of State, Ministry of Culture and National Heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, a year ago, when we held the ceremony to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the outbreak of World War II at Westerplatte, the Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki during the ceremony said, it would be great if we could come to a situation where the world would know that uh, Westerplatte is not Poland's Pearl Har Harbor. Instead, we want people to say that Pearl Harbor is the USS Westerplatte because the um, ongoing historical dispute, which a lot of time has a p political dimension to it as well, it's really important to re relate to facts and figures. And it's not clear everywhere in the world that the world's most cruel war, World War II, had its beginning on September the 1st, 1939, and that the soldiers that resisted it um, were here. This is where the soldiers first died here. Obviously, there were millions of victims, um, and Polish soldiers here at Westerplatte died. And also, uh, well, some people say that the war broke out in June 1942, or even December 1941, depending on the perspective. So it's our job to make it clear to everyone that Westerplatte was the starting point. This is where it all began. But to make this happen, we have to build an institution which will attract not just Polish people, but also visitors from the world over. And an institution that will be effective in terms also of raising awareness. The director of the museum, Karol Nawrocki, two years ago invited to come to Gdansk the heads and co-workers of more than 10 battlefield museums from all over the world. So what was set up was a worldwide forum of um, battlefield museums. They have regular meetings. We had visitors from the USS um, um, Pearl Harbor from Greeks Marathon, Waterloo, um, Belgium, Verde, France, or Gallipoli in Turkey. So the visitors from abroad, as they were taking a tour of Westerplatte, they came to the conclusion that still they cannot sense that strong symbolism from uh, which really marked the beginning of the greatest conflict in the history of civilization. It was not organized in such a way that you can really and clearly understand what was happening during the first days of September 1939. The statistical research has shown that Westerplatte took the post is something really important. Almost each poll has heard about the defense of Westerplatte, 94%. Of Poles know about it, what Westerplatte really is and what happened there. When we asked uh, uh, the Poles about association, it was two years ago, about the uh, geographical associations of the Poles, what um, is uh, most emotionally associated to them with the Second World War, then uh, then it's Auschwitz Birkenau number one, the most important symbol of the war. And the second uh, was Westerplatte, just um, note it. Warsaw with strongest conspiracy, with the uh, strongest structures of the underworld uh, resistance, but still Westerplatte is rated second. <coughs> Which shows the strength of the symbol and the power, how it can emanate, and also the city of Gdansk, which made research last year, checking what tourists coming to Gdansk visit, mo visit, um, visit the, so the most popular place was Basilica of St. Mary in Gdansk, the church, 
then the peer in a Brzezina, because everybody wants to be on the seaside, but then Westerplatte came in the third most attractive place, in spite of difficulties to, um, to get there, it takes an effort to, uh, to, um, to get here, but still, the Poles, not only the Poles, but tourists visiting, the visitors in Gdansk uh, visit these three places most frequently. So it is important to make an effort and to organize the place with a story to tell, and um, the story in uh, the um, open air, uh, wherever the battle took place, in the most symbolic places, and also on top of this, um, when we built the Museum of the Second World War, this is where we want to head. And the, um, the history of attempts to make such a museum is really long. When I was a um, culture minister in 26, I understood that there is a lot to be done. First, resources had been um, provided for some initial works by Jarosław uh, Kaczyński, then Prime Minister. And then we decided that by Pomorski Voivo there will be a special proxy to build for construction of the museum. And new plans in uh, 2007. But in 2007, the, uh, the uh, power, the, there was a shift of power. Other political party took into the power. They kind of thought about continuing this idea, but very quickly, uh, the other party decided that the Museum of Westerplatte would change its name to the Museum of the Second World War, and they decided to build this um, museum, which was built within only a couple of years. But then on Wester nothing was happening on the Westerplatte in the, uh, in the aspect of um, construction or project. At the end of 2015, we got back to power, and we decided to establish the museum, and to establish the Westerplatte in the 1939 War Museum there. And we decided that this museum, these two, that uh, this Westerplatte Museum should be an outpost of the uh, 1939 War Museum. We are determined, we really want this museum to be built uh, within the next um, years. Uh, and um, last year, uh, the Polish government amended budget for 2020, this year, the present years, and we have now provided 12 million zloty in this budget for uh, the competitions for, for the first initial stage of the uh, project, including the public tenders and so on. The uh, area would be of some 26 and a half square meters. There will be seven rebuilt uh, buildings the area of the permanent um, of the permanent museum will be almost 30, uh, three and a half square meter, a thousand square meters. The project will be going until 2026, but gradually, as we can do that in the area like that, a pretty huge um, area with different relics, with different buildings to be rebuilt. We will be gradually opening. Uh, part of the part, stage after stage, uh, this new project. We assess that by the end of the project, we will need to spend over 200 million zloty. I believe that all of you were touched to what happened in the most recent years, when the Westerplatte and the 1939 War Museum was making archaeological research on the Westerplatte Peninsula. Nobody really thought about it before. We've been doing it in a very persistent uh, way. Now we are in the middle of the sixth stage of it. Two years ago, we uh, showed um, you know, we showed um, an exhibition of some exhibits, which had been extracted from the uh, from these 
work, several thousands may be uh, shown during the permanent exhibition. Those are really valuable objects. But I believe that the most sensational thing was that one year ago, we have discovered some remains of nine soldiers who were fighting at Westerplatte, soldiers who died at Westerplatte. Nobody knew where they were buried. It was really unusual to us, something very emotional also. Actually, we only planned to check whether the Germans would leave something there because they claimed that um, they have um, taken the remains and buried the soldiers in Gdansk graveyards. But we have discovered that it was not the truth, which means that the central place at Westerplatte uh, Peninsula, which is a, a little grave cemetery, which is of symbolic uh, value. Major Suharski is buried there, and Antoni Kowalczyk, who was discovered incidentally in 1960. But the rest of the, uh, of the graves are symbolic ones. But from now on, it won't be just a symbolic uh, cemetery. We will be having 11 uh, soldiers who uh, are there. I may announce already that during the ceremony in a couple of years, on September the 1st, 2020, at 4.45 in the morning, in the main speech, which will, which will be delivered there, uh, and this uh, will be organized by the Polish army, you will learn something really interesting connected with this sensational um, excavation from a year ago the remains of the Polish soldiers of Westerplatte. I want to thank very much to all the team of the museum, <coughs> of the uh, Westerplatte and the 1939 War Museum for the efforts with exploration of this area and, the, and finding those unusual things and for the concept works, which has been already delivered and the results of those you will learn Today, you have seen something from this short video, but you will learn even more. And I wish you, the team, uh, the determination in uh, delivering the project, the project which is so important for the Polish state and for the wise um, politics of memory and remembrance. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Jarosław Selin. And now I want to welcome to the stage the host of this uh, facility, Dr. Karol Nawrocki, the director of the 1939 War Museum in Gdańsk. Dear Minister, dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, Westerplatte does not look like today does not look like a place which is ready to the story about the essence of its creation of functioning and of this enormous value of military defense of the military transit depot by the Polish heroes for several decades now. Unfortunately, we have had chaos and lack of order. In 1970s, one of the authors of the management plan Professor Adam Haupt has written, nobody has agreed with me the change, the later changes and amendments. As a result, there is a lot, uh, Westerplatte is overgrown with weeds, uh, with masts and tables and, uh, and things which only destroy the atmosphere and they weaken the power of the symbol of Westerplatte. Well, because everybody wanted to add something, then Westerplatte is now covered with an additional artificial skin. And Westerplatte now came to the elegant uh, dining rooms of the Third Rzeczpospolita. Nothing changed really in 1990s and to the landscape chaos, which was already there, to the attempt of decomposition of the truth about uh, of Westerplatte, which was um, taken by the communists before 1980s, then the, the uh, Westerplatte was divided by different um, institutions. As you, look, as you look at this map, you will see the ownership structure at Westerplatte, which uh, used to be very complicated. It still is until now. 
but we will, I will get back to it. And as a result, the, aware, the national awareness about uh, Westerplatte is unfortunately really like uh, this phenomenon which we had discovered. Minister has said, as we knew, that over 90% of the Poles know that Westerplatte is an important symbol, but they cannot necessarily define what happened there. The data you see now, the percentage which we will see, they tell about a long uh, term, decade long vacuum in museum awareness at um, Westerplatte. 20% of the Poles know what happened at Westerplatte. 42% know who Major Suharski was, which means that 58% uh, including those who know that Westerplatte is important, but they cannot tell anything about Major Henrik Suharski. And as little as 36% may define how long the Battle of Westerplatte took. The chaos which is reflected on the national awareness of Westerplatte resulted in it that in April 2017, when the Westerplatte and the 1939 War Museum were uh, merged, then the very first and the most important task to us was to have the legal spice for the project. So that this project, after so many decades, would be feasible. We have developed um, a draft of a special law, which thanks to um, Minister Selin and uh, Kazimierz Smoliński uh, went through the, uh, through the legislation process of the Polish Parliament, of the Polish Senate, and, they was, and was approved by the majority. And in, uh, on, in August the 1st, um, 19, uh, 2019, it was signed by the President of Poland, Mr. Andrzej Duda. And by that, we can now have the option to, 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 to deliver the project. So just look at it. Our project should have right proportions. So it is 50 years of uh, negligence, one year of a special law, and 15 days from um, the date when Dariusz Drelich, the Pomorski governor, passed the decision that some part of Westerplatte will be governed by the uh, 1939 War Museum. This is right proportion for the project, and this are the proportions which don't take away any energy from us, no joy from us, just because we want to develop this uh, museum uh, project. As you've heard from the minister, Mr. Selin, this is a museum with a cutoff point for what has been the civilization's most tragic disasters with more than 50 million victims from the Baltic all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. Once and for all, this museum is going to tell Europe and the world that World War II began on September 1st, 1939, right here in Poland. And anyone lying about this in public saying that uh, World War II began in June 1941 then in three, four, five years from now, they will be invited over to Westerplatte where they'll be able to see firsthand where the war really began. So we have three main values, a triad of values, and this is the outline uh, or the structure of our museum. It's going to be arranged vertically and this is going to speak volumes about the idea for the museum. This will also be resonated with the, uh, w with the perception and this will be reflected in the exhibit. So that's the authenticity of the battlefield, symbol of the beginning of World War II, an expression of readiness of the Polish soldier to defend their homeland. There will be four axes as part of the triad. First, we will have the context of the peninsula. There will be four axes telling the military story of the peninsula. So this is what determined what was happening uh, on the peninsula over the decades. We will then have the recreation axis, a supplement, but it r really will relate to the times where part of the peninsula was also a resort. And the um, um, 
s the, the economic axis and also the symbolic axis, which started September 1st, 1939, which is when Mr. Plata for Polish people who were fighting all over Poland and it, for all Polish soldiers, it became a symbol of resistance but equally so an archetype of what Polish people did and how they were uh, during World War II because we were ready to sacrifice everything um, even when faced with the crushing force of the enemy. There will be outdoor areas as well. We will restore the original pathways to the military transit depot there is a concept which is going to balance out conservation efforts, reconstruction of parts of the military transit depot, and there will also be a modern museum space. And we're really happy, and believe me, this is not something we actually planned for, but we've done a survey, and it shows that this is what Polish people think about Westerplatte and what it should be like. 75% of Polish people say that the outdoor Westerplatte Museum is the best solution. 51% are in support of reconstruction of historic buildings and 36% of Polish people expect that the museum is going to combine mo the modernity and relics. So our vision and our concept matches um, that of society. So in formal terms, it all goes back to one person who spent several decades of their professional life working here. That was Igor Stroch, an architect, and he developed two basic documents to describe what Westerplatte needs, both in terms of architecture and engineering. So these are the two constitutions uh, laying out what we're going to do. This is the functional program uh, for the historic site and also conservation um, inventory and conservation guidelines. So two documents, w and they are now supplemented with museum documents. We've conducted a number of queries. We also looked at the security and safety of the peninsula, which includes health and safety and consistency of access, accessibility, and the paths, making sure that it's well available to all our visitors. So we um, also looked at what the museum can do in modern times. Plus, we had a discussion as part of the World War II Museum Board. And a very warm welcome to Jacek Friedrich, who is an art historian and a great authority on museums and studies of museums. He's also the director of the National Museum in Gdansk. And also a very warm welcome to everyone on the board for your dynamic and very constructive discussions we've had. We've had um, uh, three major debates with very lively and vivid discussions presenting a wide variety of perspectives. And so we're really happy because on the 23rd of August 2019, our board made the unanimous decision to adopt the vision. And the vision uh, was also uh, part of what the board contributed. Minister Selin mentioned the worldwide forum of battlefields. And this is what we did, in fact, because we uh, confronted our views with the experience of the heads of battlefield museums worldwide. We've had 25 meetings with um, team members coming from uh, different uh, areas and fields, some of them working for the museum here, some of them will be spe speaking to you shortly, not taking uh, as much time as I am, hopefully, uh, but they'll be here to, to share their knowledge and experience with you. And also a very warm thank you to the people who um, are in charge of the content of the museum, because we have people here today who are responsible for the museum pathways. We have Adam Koperkiewicz, the director, um, an experienced um, 
uh, expert for years. He was director of the Museum of History. We have two professors from the University of Gdansk. That's Professor Grzegorz Berant, who's a, a university teacher specializing in 20th century history, and Professor Turek, um, equally uh, a professor, historian of ideas, who wrote many important publications and biographies. Um, on our team, they are responsible for reviewing the museum's ideas and how it all goes back to the child of the values. So it's a joint effort, but obviously it's the historic uh, content that's the driving force behind our ideas. I'm going to hand it over to my team. Uh, first, uh, thank you to everyone again. And the first person to speak um, is a graduate of the Lublin University of Technology, and he came here from Lublin specifically to build Westerplatte. He has 13 years of professional experience in the construction industry. He's um, the author and constructor of many important projects across Poland. So, Mr. Zions, can we have you here, please? Ladies and gentlemen, the battlefield area. It covers the area which is part of the Gdansk city and also the fortification um, uh, area of the Media Rampart. So it's all part of the uh, Real Estate Management Act. The uh, area, the historic um, area is the Monument of History, and it, this is also a listed site. During our project, we will do three things involving the historic site. We will reconstruct selected buildings, we will do conservation efforts, and we will provide interpretation to the um, uh, artifacts. We will begin with modernizing the original powerhouse, and we will also arrange the interiors for exhibition purposes. We will also rebuild the military cemetery and provide interpretation for Guardhouse 5 and Officer's Villa. This is to be finished until quarter 3, 2022. We already have an architectural competition out for the cemetery. The second stage is the uh, warehouse of the depot, including the fort outposts, selected munition, uh, warehouses, um, station master's building, and the red wall. This will continue until quarter four, 2024. And the third final stage of the project will be delivered in the southwest uh, wing of the Westerplatte Peninsula, where we will build a, a new mu building. Uh, anything else? Well, uh, the other things we will do will be conservation works and the guard house number three and the warehouse and also the NCO casino, uh, the administrative building and the old barracks where we will provide interpretation. And uh, this will be covered by an architectural competition. We hope to finish this by quarter three, 2026. In the meantime, there will be other works to upgrade the roads, car parks, access road, um, site development, so the overall c cost is 226 million zlotys net. This project is a complex multi-layered process. What we're going to do it will also include additional works. The idea being ensuring safety and security of the site and its archeological resources. A lot of work will have to be conducted um, on the peninsula, but first of all, we will have to understand where explosives uh, are. Possibly this will be followed by geophysical, geological, and archaeological works. Um, the permit to go ahead with the project, the building permission, will be issued by the governor of Pomorskie. Under the Act, the decisions can be uh, changed and the permit can be um, staged over several phases. Under the decision of the governor, the investor, which is World War II Museum, will become 
the user of the land and will have the right to use it for construction purposes and will be allowed to go ahead with the construction works. And finally, can I just say that uh, apart from the works that I've already listed, we will also um, develop the site to ensure that the museum for World War II can deliver its statutory uh, duties, such as education. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as you've just heard, under the special law, we can deliver the project in several stages. Um, but what we cannot um, forget is that it all has to fall into place as a whole. This has a holistic vision for the entire museum. So the, the visitors' pathways are really important because as we continue our work, we have to remember that whether it's in 10 or 60 years, the visitors to this museum will want to see uh, the whole thing and, and start where it begins and end where the museum uh, finishes. So the visitor's pathway has to be planned uh, and um, irrespective of the fact that this will be delivered in stages. Now, this is the job of uh, Bartłomiej Garba, who's a curator, historian, graduate of the University of Gdansk for more than 10 years. Um, he has been asso associated with the Museum of World War II, co-author of the main exhibition. He specializes in, um, the, um, in creating the exhibit. So, over to Bartłomiej Garba. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of the museum is to portray the history of this place and to get there, uh, the narrative for, for the exhibitions will be relayed to the peninsula, which means that we are going to use the original objects and relics. There will be interpretation of the relics of the battlefield and we will rebuild or restore some of the buildings. The narrative will uh, follow the reconstructed historic layout of the military transit depot, but there will also be modern functions um, layered over this. There have been some changes happening over the years, and there will be thematic axes combining um, the past and the present. Number one is the military axis, which uh, discusses the history of Westerplatte and it also sets the tone. So that particular axis will be most important for us as we build the narrative for the museum. Axis two is the recreation, the leisure element of it, because it also has that function today. And then we will have axis three when this is become when this became a transit. Um, place and so this is the economic dimension and the final axis is the remembrance axis. It starts on September the 1st and continues until today. How the, these uh, axes are um, overlaid and, and by ensuring that there is a consistent narrative for all the axes, we'll be able to create a museum that will combine the historic relics and the restored uh, buildings. This will make it fully comprehensive and credible. And the present and restored uh, space will be subject to conservation. Now together we will follow the visiting path of the planned exhibition. So first, uh, walk in the historical border of the military transit uh, depot, so-called Red Wall, we'll get to the restored building of the station master. Then we will move on his by the historical railway route. We'll have uh, depot number one. In the depot number one, we will tell story about Westerplatte, about the peninsula. And uh, until the final days of August 1939. Then we'll walk uh, by the restored uh, um, depots two and three, and we'll get to uh, depot eight, ten, eleven, twelve, and fourth outpost. 
here will tell the story about the heroic uh, defense of Westerplatte, which lasted for seven days. Going uh, to the south, to the right, we'll have the, uh, we have the remains of, uh, of number five guard house. It was where at least six soldiers died during bombing and after that we'll go to the very heart of the peninsula, namely the cemetery of the uh, defenders of Westerplatte and here we'll have the remains of soldiers um, of Westerplatte. Going to the west and east and uh, south we'll go to the old barracks um, of uh, the officers um, NCO, officers uh, casino and with this and there we will uh, tell about uh, the significance during the war and also about the transformations of the place after 1945. Five. Going towards the monument, we'll see one facility, a building with a space of museum. Here, for on almost two and a half uh, thousand square meters, we'll be telling about the Polish a history of war and also we will be telling about the fate of the defenders during the war and also after the war. Going uh, further to the north we'll see the monument and then we'll walk to the uh, electricity power plant, power plant and here we'll see uh, archaeological exhibition and we'll be telling here about our exhibits which were ex excavated there. Thank you very much for your attention. Westerplatte to us historians and to all of us, to all the Poles. It is mainly the symbol of resistance against the German aggression, but it is also, as we know, and I want to welcome our neighbors from Westerplatte Peninsula, uh, the port, uh, the manager of Port of Gdansk and uh, skipper uh, Wojtek, and also people from the Gdansk city as on Westerplatte today. Apart from that, that uh, we have the process of uh, the project, the construction, but the also there is also business going there, military and uh, border control, border guards. So we want to uh, cut this difficult uh, issue and we cooperate very well with our neighbors. But Westerplatte, it is also a place with a lot of tourists. So we should be sensitive to what the tourists want. Today with us, we have Karolina Imianowska, master's degree in tourism and recreation, graduate of postgraduate studies, business international at the University of Gdansk. For 15 years now, she's been um, active uh, in the tourism industry. Karolina Imianowska. Uh, well, Westerplatte, it's the battlefield, the place where the Second World War began, but it's also a very touristic place, with, which is very attractive to tourists. Our data showed that the peninsula is visited by some 500,000 um, tourists each year. Well, uh, tour, military tourism has always been um, in focus and the museum will be situated in a historical original place, then the message will be even stronger and the personal experience of the past events would be also in focus. The museum will be the outdoor museum and for the tourists to learn the history of the peninsula, the beginning of the visiting uh, path, well, we have this tourist information office, a welcome um, and the reception of the peninsula. It will be uh, located in the station master building. There people can buy the tickets to the museum at this uh, railway station, which will be rebuilt very meticulously and it will be very close to the original. There will be, we will be having information and we will be having a store with some souvenirs and also a special place for the uh, guides. We respect uh, what the tourists want to do, which is why it will be adopted to um, what the tourists want to do there, which means that you can simply walk 
by yourself in the open space. You can visit the buildings by yourself or you may choose to visit it together with a guide. The battlefield is about an open space, obviously. Uh, and if we add to it various forms of historical narration with new technologies, we will only strengthen the message, I believe. So at the first stage of the project, all the tourist movements uh, will be planned in the Station Master Building and in the Power Plant Building. On the second stage, we will be having a new facility, which will be having uh, the uh, commercial and exhibition function. And availability of purchase of the ticket will be there, not only in the tr traditional uh, ticket offices, but also via the um, internet and in the museum. Well, the museum uh, project is a multi-plan, planned for many years, but we have now developed a new series of promotional materials. You may uh, get it on the internet store, which we opened today. You're all welcome. Thank you. Now, we are talking about buildings, how to restore them, and about the building which will be a reception to our guests, the master station building, station master building, but the restructuring of the building is something that quite often in, is beyond my reception. And I believe you are also interested how technically we may reconstruct the military uh, the military transit depot, and there is no better person to tell about it than the graduate of Grants Technical University with 15 um, experience out of, from many uh, Tri-City uh, tri architectural uh, studios. Andrzej Dietrich. Ladies and gentlemen, we plan several activities for different locations in the, on the peninsula. And we will be restoring, will be con uh, we will uh, renovate and we will be making the buildings more clear. We plan to restore some buildings to show the main role of the former military transit depot. Uh, such management plan will give us much better reception uh, and perception of this place and uh, type of functioning. We will be having uh, special foundation systems with maintaining uh, what's, uh, what has been excavated. With that, we will be having the space without risking an interve of an invalid intervention. The conservatory renovation will provide uh, will provide a possibility for the visitors to visit the place. The first one is the powerhouse. The powerhouse was located in the closed space, but it will be made available to the public now. Under the project, we'll have the uh, primary form, the original form of it. We'll be having also archaeological exhibition there around the power plant building, we'll be having additional uh, buildings with cul for cultural and educational events. Uh, some other things will be in the open space, in the outdoor space. We have unexcavated historical relics. Our objective is to cover them with conservation activities and to show them to the public. With that, when you walk on the Wester on Westerplatte, you will walk uh, among the former military transit depot. The conservation and good management of the battlefield at Westerplatte will contribute to, pres uh, to having to maintaining the uh, unusual specific values of the place with, he with very high symbols of patriotism and sacrifice of the Polish soldier. With revitalization and revalorization and modern attractive forms of exposition, the museum uh, will be able to reach to much many more people who would be interested in visiting the place. 
the exhibition space will show the original exhibits about uh, which come from uh, building and activity of the former military transit depot and also the uh, the some um, memories from world war two thank you one of the first uh, point of our story of our agenda until the first uh, what happened there until the first of september 1939 will be the depot number one very similar to the munition depot number eight which you can see here and what we have uh, what we will be having for you well we will hear about it from uh, from the curator, political scientist, museologist, and graduate of museology at uh, Warsaw University. We have Marek Zembrzycki. Ladies and gentlemen, depot number one is the biggest of the munition depots of the uh, former military transit depot at Westerplatte. Its purpose, uh, well, it would be a multifunctional uh, room with exposition, an exhibition. The, we will be showing a short uh, video and we will be showing the exhibits which had been excavated. Both uh, media will help us to give a very rich uh, outlook at the history of Vestelprate until the end of. August 1939. Well, some main uh, outlines of this depot are following. Well, we are used to the thought that the past, it is something that we don't have anymore. Well, but material things, they complicated this type of thinking. And we can see it most clearly at uh, when we look at archaeological exhibits because we understand that the present is about collection of the past layer after layer epoch after epoch and this uh, motif of uh, layering will be used by us to tell the story of Westerplatte. we planned to build an exhibition wall which will be filled with authentic exhibits, which will be located in layers. Each of the layers respond to a different period in the history. The way of presentation will be reflection of periodization of the history of the city. However, the focus will be put on the second uh, free city of Danzig and functioning of the military transit depot. Each of the exhibit will be telling for itself for the layer that it represents. And all the exhibits jointly will be telling about Westerplatte as the plate of collective past. I am convinced that the uh, that what the archaeologists will uh, develop will encourage this type of exhibition. Our exhibition wall will be completed by the infographics, where we'll provide context to the exhibits. It will include two main aspects. One will be the time aspect and the other will be space aspect. With them, the visitors will see the milestones, the most important events on the layers. And also they will be able to follow the spatial development of Westerplatte. In addition to a special addition to people with, who are visually impaired, there will be a set of, rel of uh, reliefs which will present the exhibits in scale one to one. And thus, the depot number one will allow our guests to understand the history of Westerplatte 
until World War II broke. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in 1919 at Vester Plata, there was Mieczysław Białowiecki, representative of Polish government back then. And I don't think he ever expected that over the next two decades, Vester Plata was going to become a symbol of um, Poland's, um, how Poland was handling German aggression. So it was September the 1st, 1939. This was the defining moment for Westerplatte and the Polish archetypes of defense. The first seven days of September 1939 are going to be the main military moment that we will be showcasing. And our plans regarding this as part of the fortifications and the munition warehouses. Well, we are going to hear about this from engineer Mariusz Wojtowicz Podhorski, uh, who is author of popular science publications on the history and revitalization of Westerplatte. Um, he um, works to restore the memory of the military transit depot at Westerplatte. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fort Outpost is an exceptional historic site at the Westerplatte battlefield because this is the um, only object that remained untouched. And this is what makes it so exceptional. No other historic fortification, whether original or restored or whether other um, battle um, um, field places are not as authentic as this one is. And this one is authentic because it's never been transformed. And it is, it dates back to 1911. This is the only historic building like that at Westerplatte, which is largely um, um, protected. It has passive and active elements. Passive because it will be available for visitors to see in an almost original setting. There is also the active function because visitors will be able to see the surrounding landscape the way Polish soldiers saw it in 1939. So following the Polish conservation school of thought, the fortification itself is, uh, uh, provides testimony of um, the original site. Even though the, the fort or the fortification was not built by Polish architects or engineers, but neither are the Malborg Castle or the Warsaw Citadel. So despite not being designed by Polish people, um, it is part and parcel of Polish history now. In our project for the museum, the fort for um, the um, outpost will include the shelters, and munition warehouses, that's number eight, which is the um, original warehouse for grenades and shrapnels. And there will also be a complex um, number 10, 11, and 12. So all of this will create a historic part, which is really important for tourism and education. The trees um, will also be protected and resemble just as it was in 1939. This may look modest, but it will be, um, th this will carry a lot of content. And I just want to relate to Mr. Navrotsky said, because many times he uh, stressed the heroism of Polish soldiers. And there's one important fact, really c forgotten, and it's about the defense of Westerplatte. There were six, it was manned by um, six soldiers commanded by Matrym Rygielski. Um, and as a young man, um, I was able to listen to his stories, which was so emotional. And this is something you can only get from someone who was part of the developments. And that outpost was attacked by Kriegsmarine troops. And there were six soldiers there. And then at some point, they lost two of the soldiers at the same at that time, Rygielski actually gave in to requests from a neighboring uh, commander, and he sent two of his soldiers there, leaving 
because the other soldiers didn't have the proper defenses. And now I'm getting to the actual point. When the Germans undertook their attack on September the 1st, they had 49 soldiers to deploy. At the end of the attack, there were only 13 um, that could continue fighting. So these are forgotten episodes, and this is something we want to showcase in our new museum. So conservation work in the fort and in the surroundings will be preceded with archaeological studies. We will do the excavations to, to discover and to document the sites. This will include um, the reconstruction of the munition warehouses. There will be technical studies, expert studies. We will install a CCTV system. There will be security in place. Plus, there will be works designed to build restaurants and, and other utilities. We are also going to reconstruct munition warehouses 8, 9, 11, and 12. There will be some greenery works as well, and we, uh, which includes historical green. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, so it's fight, dedication, sacrifice, suffering, and death. That takes me to um, the, uh, the, the part where we want to talk about the cemetery, and we found some remains last year, but our first job on behalf of the Polish state is to ensure that our heroes have a proper burial. Once we've done this, we will provide the, uh, the surroundings. And this is why the cemetery and the um, power building are some of our priorities that we want to finish um, until September 2022. We have plans regarding the cemetery. There is a specific layout and design, and we'll have more about that from uh, our, someone who's a lawyer, project manager, social activist, graduate of the University of Gdansk with more than 12 years of experience in managing uh, cultural, social, and infrastructure projects. Over to Mr. Błażewicz. Ladies and, gentlemen, um, ladies and gentlemen, the military um, cemetery at Westerplatte will be built on this particular plot, 25-2. And this will be done before we will have built the um, actual buildings. It will have a new form, but what it will be, we will only find out once we've conducted an open competition. And that's, in fact, already been announced, and we wait to see the results on the 22nd of December this year. We want the cemetery to ensure interaction, social interaction, culture, and education with historic and patriotic events played out there. But equally so, we hope that this will be the site for state and military ceremonies. The cemetery, through its form and expression, is designed to um, underline the, the heroism and the sacrifice of Polish soldiers. There will be three functional zones. Number one is the cemetery, lined with the orange line. We will, this will be the burial place for the 12 defenders of Westerplatte, and there will be uh, some reserves as well with the possibility to extend the cemetery to the west. And then the uh, um, forefield, aligned with the blue lines, where we will provide interpretation for the officer's building and guardhouse five, which claimed the, mo most of the uh, lives as a result of the air raids by the Germans. And number three, which is the ceremony square. This is where the ceremonies will be held uh, with a capacity of at least a thousand people. It's important to us to ensure that the historic developments of Westerplatte um, are well preserved and, and well showcased. So we will recreate uh, the access routes as they were originally um, at the time of the military transit depot. But we also want to provide good access to the cemetery because it's a symbol of the place. So the tombs and the crosses will have simple form with Christian symbolics. We will ask the designers to um, keep the, the existing greenery as the backdrop. The designers will be able to use existing layouts um, and the elements of that. For example, the Captain Dombrowski's cross, but also the Virtuti Militari 
cross? Well, the estimated cost for the cemetery is 3.5 million zlotys, and the, um, the deadline is the 1st of September 2022. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are slowly approaching the end of our presentation, but in fact, this is now different to how we began with the project. We started with the cemetery of the Westerplatte defenders, but now we're going to move on to the uh, power plant building. As Minister Selin said, this is where we laid the cornerstone for the, the new building. In that building, we, well, we hope to open this on September the 1st, 2022. And what's what you're about to see in that building is something you'll find out from our curator, who is archaeologist, museum professional, graduate of the Wrocław University, more than 16 years of professional experience, uh, not just in Poland, but worldwide. That's Mr. Filip Kuczma. Ladies and gentlemen, our museum for the last four years has been conducting um, the first systematic archaeological research at Westerplatte. Up until now, we've already covered uh, 18,000 square meters, which is 3% of the area handed over to Poland in 1925. Our work and our studies um, have helped us gain access to a lot of new knowledge about the history of Esterplatte, but we've also gained several thousands of artifacts which tell the story of the history. Well, what I find particularly valuable is 14,000 uh, artifacts. The collection includes uh, objects which today um, are really unique and, and tell the story of Polish soldiers um, defending the Strzelplatte. The um, results of the work will be presented at our exhibition, which we want to set up in the newly restored building of the uh, power plant building. So in that building, which has 155 square meters. So we're going to use this space to showcase around 300 artifacts telling the story of Westerplatte. Plus, the exhibition will include an interactive 3D mock-up that will illustrate the changes that happened over the 300 years of history of Westerplatte. The purpose of our exhibition is not just to underline the, uh, the symbolic character of Westerplatte. What's equally important is to interpret it in detail and to explain the daily life of the soldiers manning the depot. We want to show that the hard service and the responsible service they were paying in the face of growing aggression from Germany were to counteract um, any sort of expression of Polish identity here in the, the free city of Gdansk. We also want to tell the story of the uh, uh, camp at Westerplatte, which is Polish people, civilians who were arrested in Gdansk and Gdynia. So that was, that was a camp where they were incarcerated. So obviously this is defense, but also we have the, um, uh, the, the, the marks the heavy marks left behind um, by the Germans. In um, 2019, we came across the remains of nine soldiers who were killed uh, while defending the military transit depot. Um, they were, um, th th their bodies were, were thrust here and deep into the ground, which we found some just, just 20 meters from the tombs that are dedicated to them, but they are obviously symbolic um, graves for them. And it's just 
um, not far f from the road that takes visitors to the monument. So uh, over the decades, they were left forgotten. Now in the face of this discovery, our museum faced uh, a new challenge. And it's a great challenge, which is to um, ensure that they have a proper burial place because they are the Polish heroes and defenders of Westerplatte. The visiting path will uh, be uh, ended in, at the end of the peninsula. Today we, have the, uh, we are looking for possible explosives and we are also doing some geological research which will tell us whether this um, place is uh, feasible for the new building. Now we've researched only uh, some 35 minutes, but w there will be a building where we will be telling about the, uh, the war uh, from the Polish side. We believe that we will be um, able to create a museum space there, as Westerplatte that provides us option to have the very first in Poland museum and comprehensive story about the Poland's defensive war against the German aggression and also against the Soviet aggression to the east of Poland. And in our team, it is a curator, historian, graduate of the University of Gdansk, responsible uh, for that, a museum worker for nine years of experience, Mr. Wojciech Łukaszum. Ladies and gentlemen, the narration about the fights on Westerplatte will be completed by an exhibition about the Polish war in 1939. It will be located in a new building, possibly located close to this inscription, No More War. The final location will be decided after we've had the, the results of the uh, archaeological uh, work, uh, works. And the building will be created by those who win the competition. In the building, we will be also having offices and the back offices of the museum. The very heart of it will be an exhibition on uh, two and a half square meters. We would want to show the story of the September campaign war, war campaign in Poland. The first part will be called uh, Westerplatte uh, uh, is still on the fence and we will be showing what was happening in Poland, in Europe, when Westerplatte defended itself. Part two, the uh, defense, uh, retreat and evacuation. It will be um, telling the story on the spontaneous and organized evacuation from the uh, field taken by the Germans. Part three, of the exhibition will be called Do Not Fight Against Bolsheviks. It will be about the controversial order of Marshal Rydzschmigwe. So it will be about the Red Army, what it was doing there and about this controversial order of Marshal and also about the places where Polish soldiers uh, fight against the Red Army. Part number four, surrender. It will be uh, about the places where the last uh, fights were going on and about surrender of Poland. We will be also telling about uh, the places where the fights were continued and what was happening in the West. This four-part exhibition will be completed by an introduction. Our narration will begin from uh, January 1939. We'll be telling about politics, about diplomacy, about different events which uh, resulted in the war. We will be telling about uh, March and April 1939. The uh, fourth part of the exhibition will be ended at the end uh, in something which we called an epilogue, we'll be uh, telling about partisans and all the narration will be um, ended by on the date of April the 30th, 1940, when Major Hubal was killed. Apart from the exhibition, we will uh, show an exhibition on what was happening with soldiers on, from Westerplatte during and after the war. Thank you very much. 
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your presence and for your attention. I want to thank my team who uh, was doing this job with uh, a lot of passion, a lot of heart, and they developed this um, vision of the plant museum. I want to thank Minister Mr. Jarosław Selin and Minister um, Gliński. Without Minister Selin, we wouldn't be having this uh, project. As um, this very politician demanded this type of museum as early as in uh, 2015, and he demanded the museum to be built uh, there. I want to thank uh, my colleagues who are supporting us with their uh, advice. We've heard a lot today, and I know that with your cooperation, with your goodwill uh, that I'm asking for, on the, uh, that on uh, September the 1st, mm, 2022, uh, on the 1st September 2026, if these visions all come true, we, as the Poles, we will be able to say that at last we have our common Polish Westerplatte. We uh, are united by Westerplatte. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Karol Nawrocki. We want to thank our experts who helped us with the project for construction project outline in Westerplatte and the 1939 War Museum. Dr. Jacek Friedrich, Professor Grzegorz Berend, Deputy Manager of the Museum in Gdańsk, and also Adam Koperkiewicz, the advisor to the uh, director of the uh, Second World War Museum, and Wojciech Turek, Professor of Gdańsk University, who works in the Museum of the Second World War in Gdańsk. And now we are getting to um, an end of this uh, a bit longer conference, and we'll be have, we have concluded the official part, and now we have time for questions from media. So you have now two people who can answer your questions. This will be Minister Jarosław Selin, please come forward, and the director of the museum, Dr. Karol Nawrocki. So uh, media may ask questions now. You have minister and director. Please remember that the subject of today's conference are the main outlines of the construction project for Westerplatte and the 1939 War uh, Museum. Uh, any other questions uh, we'll, you, could, you can ask later, but please first we'll be talking about the museum. Good morning, Director, Minister. Two questions.